Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And in this video, we're going to be covering the top chemical companies that are quite relevant if you are into the chemical industry. And before we dive into the list, I want to let you know that this is actually a lecture on my new course, the introduction to the chemical industry. So if you think that this may be a good fit for you, you are interested in the chemical industry, want to boost your knowledge and improve your professional career, for sure, go and check it out. But for now, let's go and dive directly. So in the previous lectures, we talked about the key segments and the top players but we haven't analyzed the top chemical companies. We're going to see their main products, their location, and of course, the revenues. So here we go. And of course, we have BASF, which is the top chemical company. It's situated in Germany, founded back in the 1800s. They were pioneers of dye, and they rapidly grew through research and development, especially with acquisitions. They are always buying and purchasing and merging with other companies. Main products are chemicals, plastics, I would say performance products. They are known for the innovation, catalyst, and of course, lately, agricultural solution. So their approximate revenue is crazy for a chemical company, 90, 95 billion dollars in the last year. Then we continue with Sinopec from China, which can be a little bit unfair because this is a government owned company. So it's hard because they own the natural resources, let's say they are state owned. Their creation is recent, founded in the year 2000. They rapidly evolved from petroleum roots, let it be petroleum refining fuels, into one of the world largest chemical producers. So these are the stories I like to tell as a chemical engineer. You don't want to focus in the raw material, converting it, simply distilling or refining it. You want to pursue the added value in the chemicals. They focus their attention, of course, in petrochemicals, but now they are going or venturing into resins, synthetic fibers, fertilizers, and they have a very interesting revenue, 70 to 75 billions, whenever we're talking about only the chemical segment. Then we have Dow Chemical in the USA, founded in 1897. They have recently merged with DuPont. So I stated before, guys, I didn't know if I wanted to treat Dow or DuPont separately. I'm going to be taking care as if they were a unique unit. And their main products are packaging materials, polyurethanes, coatings, industrial chemicals, and well, I would say specialty chemicals are their top. Win. The revenue between 45 to 50 billion USD. Lyondell Basel, which are technically in Europe, so either in Netherlands and they have also hubs in the USA. They formed in the year 2007 Lyondell Chemical and Basel Polyolefins. So as you can see, this is a chemical company and this was a petrochemical company. And their main products are polypropylene, polyethylene, and advanced chemicals. Of these, I want to focus your attention that these are the top polymers or plastics that you can find out there. And the revenue is between 45 to 47 billion USD. Then we continue with another big monster, Sabic from Saudi Arabia, established back in the 1976. This is mostly owned by, by Saudi Aramco, which is the actual uh, hub company and they are known for scale and low cost feedstocks. So they technically own the crude oils and natural gas materials. So they are able to sell at relatively cheaper prices than the market offers. And their main products that you can imagine, petrochemicals, plastics, fertilizers, and recently going into metals, rare metals and such. Their approximate revenue, and remember that Savic focuses mostly in their chemical part, is 40 to 45 billion USD. Next is South Korea LG Chem, yes, LG as the electrical appliances. Founded back in 1947, they expanded rapidly into batteries and advanced chemicals. Their main products right now, petrochemicals, batteries, specialty chemicals. Revenue between 35 to 38 billion USD, whenever we talk about the chemical segment. Then we continue with Japanese Mitsubishi Chemical Group part of the Mitsubishi conglomerate. Remember that Mitsubishi is a very huge monster company in Japan. They focus their attention into a lot of industries. So if I were to account for all Mitsubishi company, it will be kind of unfair to do 
that remark, but thankfully they have their chemical group separated. Their main product is, of course, performance materials, polymers technically, films, basic chemicals, advanced chemicals, and pharmaceutical ingredients. The revenue between 30 to 33 billion USD. A quite familiar company, ExxonMobil, uh, or ExxonMobil Chemical from the US, do not confuse with the actual ExxonMobil conglomerate. Here we're talking about the chemical division of ExxonMobil alone. And as you can imagine, these work mostly with petrochemicals, polymers, and yeah, we're talking about olefins, aromatics, polyethylene, rubbers, etc. All these materials that come from the refining of petroleum. The revenue between 30 to 32 billion USD. Of course, if you check out Exxon alone, will be quite different because they focus their attention into crude oil as well. Then we continue with Ineos from the UK. It's privately owned, founded back in 1998. These are by far one of the top industries that grew fast, very rapidly through acquisitions, essentially just purchasing other companies. And their main products are into petrochemicals, but also solvents, polymers, composites, and advanced. Their revenue is something around 30 billion USD. And finally, guys, DuPont. As stated before, it merged with Dow Chemicals. So essentially, I'm going to be focusing into the specialty chemicals, electronic chemicals, water filtration, nutrition, and post structure, we can be talking about a 13 to 15 billion USD revenue. So DuPont still being a quite relevant company, but whenever we talk about DuPont, we should always ensure that we're talking about Dow and DuPont chemical companies. There you have it guys, the top 10 global chemical companies. So as you can see, most of them focus in petrochemical, plastics, polymers, but also into fertilizers, agrochemicals, and more importantly, they also have a focus towards specialty chemicals, fine chemicals, and advanced materials. Generally speaking, most of them are privately owned, but there are some exceptions that are government owned or not fully public. The main idea of this video is to have a better understanding of the chemical companies that are out there, the big players and the big chemical segments. And if you have been working in any of these companies, guys, please let us know in the comment section how is it to work in a top 10 global chemical company. I'm pretty sure many of us are quite curious on how it feels to work for one of these giants. On my behalf, guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video. Love is clean and love is pure And love is the thing that no doctor can cure